Hey everybody, it's Jason Blah here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about when it comes to gaining muscle. I think people get entirely too caught up on this idea of, uh, you know, the amount of weight on the bar. Did I do these forced reps? Uh, did I pick the perfect exercise? And look, when it comes to gaining muscle, muscles don't care. They don't care whether it's a multi-joint or a single joint exercise. They don't really care if it's a machine. All, all they care about is what tension is placed upon them in what positions. Okay, and I'm not talking about for strength gains. I'm not talking about for any of this other stuff. I'm not talking about for athletic performance carryover. I am talking about when you want to grow a muscle, these tools are not better or worse than others. Okay, muscles care about the tension that is placed upon them. Now, that being said, I will say that and then people will think, oh, well, that must mean that he's saying this type of exercise. That he's then saying, well, we should just, that, that a big multi-joint movement, since it works, all those muscles are being worked, that's the best. Or he must be saying that we need to try to isolate a muscle then. No, nope, I didn't say either one of those. I want to be very, very, very clear here. Muscles don't care. They do not care. They care about what tension has been placed upon each muscle, and it cares about what tension was placed upon each individual muscle fiber. Okay, The muscle fibers that are fatigued are the ones that are going to grow. Okay, The ones that you place enough fatigue on to get a training response are the ones that's going to grow. Keep in mind that occurs different muscle fibers get hit throughout a work set on different reps. Be aware of that. Okay, every rep in a set is not the same in terms of what you just worked inside the muscle. Now, what we do know is that you're more likely to get the most muscle fibers fatigued if we go into stretched positions under load. Now, there can be cases where there's active insufficiency. You know, but generally speaking, we want long ranges of motion taking muscles into stretch positions and then training them to fatigue. Am I saying that the other positions don't help? No, I didn't say that. Am I saying that sets that don't create deep fatigue don't help? No, I didn't say that either. I'm just saying that's where the most quality occurs. The most quality stimulus, the, the most likely to get the most muscle fibers on any given rep are when we put muscles in the lengthened positions and we do reps that are very, very close to muscle failure. Okay. Now, we are most likely to get a lot of really good training response on big multi-joint movements because these muscles are all being worked. We also need to keep in mind, not every exercise needs to achieve what I just described because there's still a cumulative stress. If we still get some muscle growth in other positions, we still get muscle growth in shortened positions and contracted positions. Just because we get more potential in the lengthened doesn't mean the shortened doesn't produce anything. Just because we get the, the most hypertrophy stimulus because of the most tension placed upon more fibers, when we get really close to failure doesn't mean that a few reps away doesn't still cause some growth. So in other words, you are getting some growth stimulus on any primary mover on a multi-joint exercise, even if one muscle is the only one that really fails. There's still stimulus there. It still counts. And we need to understand that. In other words, uh, let's say I'm benching like this with the really wide grip and my, my pecs become the limiting factor instead of, instead of my triceps. Does that mean my triceps didn't get any muscle growth? No, they got some growth. They will grow some from it. Longhead probably won't grow a lot, especially if we're where I'm at, you know, as advanced of a lifter as I am. Lateral head will probably grow some. Okay? Now, that means would I get anything further from a fly? Probably not, because if my pecs limited it and it's the same movement pattern, same positions as a fly, probably not. In that case... I did a completely different type of bench that was more tricep dominant, it might, but not with what I'm doing, right? 
at least if the volume is sufficiently high on everything. Again, because again, did we get enough total volume to fatigue the most muscle fibers? Hmm. Okay, see where we're going here? All right. Well, in that case, the triceps are still going to grow some from it, but definitely not anywhere near the most possible gains. So start looking at your training that way. You know, everything does count, but know what it works, know what it doesn't, and then figure out where to fill in the gaps. But yeah, the majority of our exercises should probably take the muscles that we want to grow into deep fatigue. Okay. We should probably be taking them into lengthened positions. Now, if we just happen to have an exercise we really like and it feels good and it doesn't put us into that deep stretch, well, hey, go ahead and do it. But just make sure you're doing something that creates that other position because it's all cumulative, guys. As long as you're doing one exercise for that muscle that gets you into that position somewhere, you're probably good. It doesn't have to be everything you do, but you probably should have one you're still going to get a cumulative training response from other stuff you know the same the same with the chest pressing there that I described it's still helping the triceps but if you really wanted them to grow you should probably like you're going to see right here this this extension I'm doing now I'm taking that long head and the whole tricep into a, a lengthened position with more stretch on it okay does that mean the bench didn't contribute no it, it all adds up but this then combined with it, we're in a better place. So we need to think in these terms. Instead of thinking, well, multi-joint, single joint, big movement, small movement, machine, dumbbell. Start thinking just in terms of the, the forces being applied to the muscle and how much fatigue. Think in those terms. Are you working the muscle? Part of the muscle not get worked, well maybe maybe you should make sure you do, if you care about that muscle growing maximally, you should probably do something else on top of it, you know. Like you saw me doing those pull-ups in a row, sure they work the biceps a bit, my biceps lag. Yeah, I should probably do some stricter curls, and I need to do, probably do some curls in a supine grip that get me into a full range of motion at the bottom, which you see right there, be a good idea. But muscles don't care with these things. They only care about the tension placed on each individual fiber. And when I say the muscle, I'm, I don't mean the bicep. I'm talking one of the five billion muscle fibers in that bicep. It only cares what tension is placed on that fiber. That's what's going to determine if it grows or if it shrinks or stays the same, right? That's what's, that's what's going to matter. Now, all this other stuff can affect mobilities, it can affect strength, neural drive, all that stuff. So it starts to matter for all that, which we should care about those things. But for muscle growth, muscles only care about the tension the fiber gets. That's what it cares about. So think in those terms when you're trying to make a muscle grow. Just make sure that you're, you're really working it. You know, with everything that you've done, just make sure that you, you've worked it thoroughly with something. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.